Molly Ringwald rose to prominence seemingly overnight during the 1980s thanks to appearances in numerous now-iconic films like The Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink. Following this immense success, the actress decided to take a step back from her acting career in the 90s for numerous reasons, though she cites one specific traumatic incident with sending her over the edge. Now Molly has returned to acting on her own terms, and she looks much different than she did during the 80s. Join Facts First as we explore why Molly Ringwald's transformation is turning heads. When you ask someone who the most iconic actress of the 80s is, chances are good they'll say Molly Ringwald. Despite the immense success the actress found, she decided to turn her back on Hollywood during the 90s as a result of a traumatic experience she had during an audition. According to Molly, she went to an audition with a male friend of hers where the director they were auditioning for asked her to let that friend put a dog collar on her for the scene. There had been no mention of a dog collar in the script, so Molly was understandably taken off guard. The actress claims she was so put off by the experience, she can't remember if she allowed the dog collar to be put on her or not, claiming she had a full-blown, out-of-body experience. She can, however, remember crying in the parking lot afterwards, and she claims that this incident is what inspired her to give up acting. Molly Ringwald has never shared who exactly she was auditioning for or with during this experience, but the actress has since slowly returned to the world of acting. It seems that this incident isn't the only problematic aspect of her Hollywood past that she's forced to reconcile with today at age 54. The actress is still stunning after all these years, but may be hard to recognize for fans who only know her from her appearances in the multiple 1980 classics she'd appeared in. Molly seemed girlish during the 1980s, but seems much more mature now. This physical maturation has also come with a mental maturation, as Molly is far from being the vulnerable girl she once was. Molly Ringwald is back in the spotlight. Since her return to acting in such nostalgia-skewing works as the parody film Not Another Teen Movie and the CW program Riverdale, Molly Ringwald has also garnered some attention for her outspoken beliefs about the problematic aspects of certain films she appeared in back in the day. Of course, Molly rose to prominence during the 80s thanks to her roles in numerous teen classics of the era, including several written and directed by John Hughes. It seems to be her John Hughes films that Molly has come to have the most problem with, and it also seems as if she isn't entirely fond of the man himself. However, Molly has never shared any directly damning accusations against John. Rather, it seems she's not all that fond of the man's writing. She certainly isn't alone in her re-evaluation of John Hughes' works, as there are scenes of his films that have been universally criticized for their problematic content. Sixteen Candles features a couple of different aspects that are commonly pointed to when people want to criticize John Hughes' films. Of course, there's the character of Long Duck Dong, portrayed by beloved Japanese-American actor Gede Watanabe. Despite the fact that Long Duck Dong is obviously a negative racial stereotype, his comic relief was one of the things that made the film so popular when it was released. Another problematic aspect is the movie involves a scene many believe to insinuate rape. Before we tell you more about Molly and 16 Candles, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. 16 Candles is John Hughes' most problematic film. If the existence of Long Duck Dong wasn't enough, there's also the fact that the film features a scene that many today believe to insinuate rape. That was the scene where the jock character passes off his drunken girlfriend to Anthony Michael Hall's nerd character so the jock can go be with Molly Ringwald to blow out her birthday candles. It's strongly implied in the film that Anthony Michael Hall's character has sex with the passed out girl, though the drunken girl doesn't seem to have much of an issue with this later. This is another aspect of Sixteen Candles the public often points to when criticizing John Hughes and his creative output. Molly Ringwald in particular says this is one of the biggest reasons she's afraid to show her film roles to her three children. But Molly has just as much of a problem with the way her own character is treated in the subsequent film, The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club is also problematic. The Breakfast Club saw Molly Ringwald portray Claire, who is being romantically pursued by Judd Nelson's character Bender during school detention. While it may have been a romantic pursuit to the audience at the time, Molly has since come to believe that the way her character is being treated by Bender in the film is closer to sexual harassment than any kind of romantic pursuit. Molly claims Bender's actions would be considered harassment in reality, but were written by John Hughes to be rewarded in the film. The Breakfast Club became a huge hit, and there's no question audiences were pleased 
when the characters of Claire and Bender ended up together. There's one memorable scene where the character of Bender peeks under the table to get a look at Claire's panties, and Molly claims a body double was used for these scenes because it made her uncomfortable. She still claims she felt a great deal of shame during the filming of these scenes, knowing it was her body that was supposedly being represented on camera. Molly certainly had experiences such as this in mind when she called it quits on acting the following decade. Haviland Morris defended John Hughes's writing. The aforementioned drunk girl who was supposedly raped in 16 Candles was named Caroline, and an actress named Haviland Morris played her. It's notable that Haviland has come out of the woodwork to defend John Hughes in the wake of the general cultural re-evaluation of his films. According to Haviland, what happens to her character in 16 Candles is just as much her character's fault as it is the fault of Anthony Michael Hall's character. Molly Ringwald thinks John Hughes is a freak. Beyond John Hughes's films, Molly Ringwald has also pointed to the writer and director's early work in the publication National Lampoon to criticize his deranged mind. It seems John made several pieces for the publication that would be considered incredibly problematic nowadays, including pieces regarding rape, transsexuality, and general sexual harassment, all with a frat boy slant. But Molly has also shared that she understands why so many people came to identify with Hughes's films in the 80s, and she doesn't think it's because of the bad stuff. According to Molly, she feels John Hughes's works during the 80s spoke to outcast teens who didn't feel they were being represented in the cinemas. Because of this, Molly isn't entirely negative when she's approached in the street by fans who remember her first and foremost from her work in the aforementioned films. But still, Molly isn't entirely sure about letting her own kids watch the film she starred in. According to Molly, she showed her eldest daughter at the Breakfast Club and felt very uncomfortable. This experience is what caused her to publicly come out and criticize all the aforementioned aspects of the films. What's Molly up to now? Following the traumatic audition that caused Molly to leave Hollywood, she moved to Paris and lived for a while outside the spotlight. Nowadays, she's back in the spotlight and isn't afraid to discuss issues about her past that she feels are problematic. Molly claims her kids are some of the most woke kids on the planet, and she is afraid of what her two youngest children will think when they see how her mother allowed herself to be portrayed in 16 Candles and The Breakfast Club. But Molly is slowly realizing her kids will eventually find out one way or another. She recently shared an image via social media of herself watching Pretty in Pink with her youngest daughter. Now it's time to hear from you. Which part of the story was most surprising to hear about? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Facts First as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the join button. By becoming a paid member of Facts First, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free.